Welcome to this how-to session on creating your first spatial AR experience in awe. Spatial augmented reality gives you the ability to place virtual content into the real world around you. All in web AR, so your audience can view your creation using the web browser on their mobile devices. Digital objects look like they're sitting on the ground in real world, or an area like a tabletop or seat of a chair. And because it's web AR, there's no need for downloading apps. Technically, this is an implementation of SLAM, which stands for Simultaneous Localization and Mapping, but a more friendly name is World Tracking. To start, let's create a spatial AR scene. Select Spatial AR from our new scene options. Enter a scene title, then hit Add. Now you're taken to your Spatial AR Scene Editor, which defaults to Object Edit Mode. Let's add some content. On screen, you'll see the floor grid, a person and the arrow facing towards the front of the scene. The person represents the point of view where your end users are likely to start. For this example, we're adding a 3D model. I'm using a GLTF model uploaded previously to my project media library. Move your cursor around to position the object where you want, then click to place it. You can always move it later if you need. Now let's add an animation to our fish object. We'll pick every time tracking starts. For this example, we'll play a clip animation that was exported as part of this 3D model, plus configure a range of playback options. We'll loop it forever using a yo-yo loop. That's back and forth. And we'll make it persistent. We'll reduce the speed of this to 50% of the original. Then click Done. Now let's add another animation when tracking starts to move our fish model around a bit. Choose quadratic in and out as our movement effect and loop this forever too. We'll make it a yo-yo too, and four seconds long. We wanted to move a small way along both the Y and Z axis from its starting point. You can also use the advanced edit and preview to manually move your object instead. Now add another animation, this time a rotation. Again, choose every time tracking starts. We're using quadratic in and out as the movement effect type again. And we're rotating around the y-axis 359 degrees for a duration of 12 seconds. What does all this mean? Our fish will rotate slowly as it swims around. See our quick preview here. You can add as many objects, animations and actions as you need. We're going to add an action now, again using on tracking started every time. We'll play the sound of bubbles underwater looping forever. Then select Done. Now, to modify some of the lighting in our scene, we want our fish to cast a shadow. Click the light editing icon, bottom of the screen next to the object editor icon. We're opening our existing lights list, but you can always add new lights too. Click Spotlight and change some properties. We'll move the spotlight slightly. See the direction of the shadow changing below the fish? You can also increase the floor shadow plane outside of the grid or make it smaller than the grid. Plus, you can also change the type of shadow filter that's used. Now to the scene settings. Click the icon with the cog in the top bar to update different properties of our scene that impact the end user's experience. You can set an image like a crosshair for your users to tap on to set the point of origin for the scene. This is called a reticle. Select from a range of pre-populated reticles, or add your own as we've done here, and you can change its opacity. You can choose to display a reticle message if you like, or opt to make the adjustments icon the same as your reticle image, so there's a visual context for your end users to know quickly how to reposition the reticle and point of origin for the scene content in the real world. As an alternative, you could opt for the scene to load in its default position, as you've laid it out in your object editor. In this case, the reticle won't be displayed, so the end user can just start interacting with the scene content as soon as the real world is recognized. There's lots of other configuration options under the scene settings, so check them out too. Remember, if you want to test in your own mobile device, make sure you refresh the browser page on your mobile device each time you test an update. Now open the project settings from the main navigation menu in the bottom left of the editing interface. From here, publish your project so anyone with the URL can open it in their web browser. This makes it easy for you to do testing, 
as you don't have to sign into your account on your mobile device to test. Just go directly to the URL on your browser or scan the QR code for your project or the specific scene. Next, select the Spatial AR section in Project Settings. Here, you can set up an unsupported page for desktop devices. Spatial AR won't work on desktop devices as they don't have all the necessary components to support it. Set up a quick unsupported page using our layout tool or add your own CSS and HTML to completely customise it. Time to look at our scene on your iOS or Android device. Scan the QR code that's automatically generated in the Spatial AR scene settings or enter the URL of your project in your web browser. It's that quick to set up your first Spatial AR experience. No app downloads needed. Just open it in your web browser. Check out the support section on our website at or.media for more on creating Spatial AR, adding interactivity to objects in your scene, including custom JavaScript and CSS, and how to add other web AR modes like image AR, GPS location AR, relative AR, face AR, and 360-degree scenes.